Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is good. I am so happy to come back to you. You know, I had to do a little, little uh, researching and everything. But this is part four. Part four of the three days and three nights by Prophet Six, the family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Well, I'm happy to be back. And I want to tell you why I'm happy to be back. Because we're going to jump right into something here. Now, on the last series, I ended that series by saying really this. That what the heart, I was given some, some clues about what the heart of the earth is. When we looked at the scripture that's over there in Matthew, in Mark chapter 12. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 12 where Jesus mentions several things. He, he mentions heart several times. He mentions fruit several times. And he mentions trees as well in the uh, chapter of Mark. And we determine what those, what heart, fruit, and trees represent in the Bible. Now, if Jesus then says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, the heart of of the earth he has to be in the heart of the earth jesus has to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights what scripture is that based on coincidentally enough is based on jonah three three isn't that e that's easy to remember three days three nights jonah three three okay you so you can't you can't forget that Jonah 3.3 3 ties in to what Jesus said in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Three days, three nights, Jonah 3.3. 3. You, you can't mess that up. Now, watch this. Everybody, and I want to tell you something. I noticed something about Christianity. Christianity, the false doctrine that is in Christianity Look for the most popular doctrines out there. And you and, and you bingo, you found it. You you oh, you want an example. Okay. The top of the list, Trinity. Total false doctrine. Total false doctrine. And when people see you use real simple biblical answers to defeat this doctrine, this mammoth octopus doctrine, they get so upset. And you know what they do? They run away from giving you an explanation. They really do. I've seen it the whole time. Now watch this. I'm going to give you this. Nowhere in the Bible do you see the Holy Spirit sitting on a throne. Nowhere in the Bible do you see the Holy Spirit sitting on a throne. God has to. God has to have a throne. But the Holy Spirit don't have one. Holy Spirit is not God then. But nobody wants to deal with that because that's so simple. And people have spent so many centuries building up this Trinitarian doctrine. They can't have you come away and blow it. They can't have you come along and blow it away with one, one word. But you know that's the wisdom of Jesus. The other thing that I like to bring out is this. We're going to look at Luke chapter 24, 13 through 22. Luke chapter 13. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 24, 13 through 22. Now, if we can't trust any of the eyewitnesses that are recorded in the Bible and the things that they said, we can't trust anything in the Bible. Okay, and the things that they say is authenticated by what Jesus said. Wow, so that's the anchor, the word, the living word, Jesus. Now, without further ado, let us turn to Luke chapter 24. The account that I'm 
reading and your hearing is the road to Emmaus. Okay? So we're going to look at Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 24, 13 through 22. And, and you t now, when, when you come, when an angel, a prophet, a minister, a Christian, a real disciple, a disciple comes with a simple word that tears down something that's so complicated and all this kind of stuff, the devil is really angry. And what the devil does, I notice, the devil evades the simplicity of what you presented and keep bringing up the old evidences and ammunition that he used against to extinguish the truth. I noticed that. Now, if anybody listening to this cannot bring any proof about this particular text I'm about to bring to you, you just be quiet. Because what you're doing equals to blasphemy. You want to stop the voice of the Holy Spirit in your own heart. Just stop it. Surrender. Give up. But that's hard to do when you got pride in the heart. Oh, oh boy. But let's go to Luke chapter 24. Let's look at verse 13. Look with this. Look at this, people. This is beautiful. Beautiful. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. Now, you, you keep going now. And it came to pass that while they were, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered and said unto him, are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass these past the past there in these days? Pardon me. Now we want we want to see how they define come to pass these days. Mm. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Now they don't know who they're talking to Jesus. Which was a prophet mighty in deeds and words before God and all the people. And how the chief priests, and watch this now, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. The pastors, the bishops, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers in the church. They delivered him, they're saying, delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Who did they accuse of killing Jesus? Both. That's key. That is so key in understanding the three days and three nights. What, the, what it means. But, verse 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since what happened? Since these things were done. Uh-oh, the devil is running mad now. Oh, the devil is running mad. Notice it don't say. All, it says today is the third day since he was in the grave. No, no, no. Oh, the devil is angry. Ooh, the devil is wreathing. Hell is astir. Why? Because I just use biblical record to show that all the things that had to happen in three days, 
These guys on the road to Emmaus even knew what had to happen in three days. They didn't say the only thing that happened in three days was that he was in the grave. No, no, let's go back. You don't believe me. And how the priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have, and have crucified him. Look at that. They don't even mention that he was raised from the dead right here. They don't even mention that he was put in the tomb right here, right here. Look what they do mention. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21. But we have we trusted that it should. But that, but we trusted that it had been He which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Woo! -wee. Now, my my friends who try to move Christ's crucifixion to Wednesday in big trouble. My friends who try to say three days and three nights means part of Friday. All the Saturday, they in big trouble too. These guys knew what three days and three nights was. They definitely knew what three days were. Wow. Hey, y'all, it's literal three days and three nights. Literally three days and three nights. And they don't even mention the resurrection here. They don't even really mention it right here. But let's keep going. Yea, and concerning women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of an angel, which said that he was alive. Verse 24. And certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Isn't that interesting, people? Hey, y'all, the three nights encompasses more than just him being in the grave. See, the heart of the earth, I'm going to give you a, a prophetic definition of what the heart of the earth is. The heart of the earth, because remember, Jesus only spoke to his disciples. In Jesus spoke to the multitudes only in parable. But when he talked to his disciples, his prophets, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveal his secrets to his servants. The prophets, the lion have roared, who will not fear the Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy. Now a prophet is going to give it to you. The, the heart of the earth is the heart of wicked men. It's the hands and deeds and fruits of wicked men. The wicked men that are spoken of in this context are leaders of the earth. Here we see a covenant between the leaders of God's church and the leaders of the world. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Listen to me. The Bible says that Satan is the principal, the prince of the power of the air. But look what else it all that text says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Let's read it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein in times past he walked accordingly to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in who? In the children of disobedience. Do you know that the children of the disobedient are tares? All you got to do is go to Matthew 13, 24. Matthew chapter 13, 24 describes them as tares. In another place, that describes them as goats. Hello? The prince of the power of the air working in the children of disobedience are tares. So you have wicked people, tares in the church, working with the tares in the world. 
And let me say this. Oh, Holy Ghost, thank you. The tares in the world are the storehouse. The children of the world be in the world, but not of the world. I'm speaking in that context. Are the children are the storehouse of tares. That's how the church, God's true church, gets its supply of tares. They get them from the world. They come in from the world. They get baptized. And guess what? They still are the world, but they are children of disobedience, i.e. agents of Satan. And I noticed that whenever the children of the world come in, they come in and they shoot for the top positions in God's kingdom. Just like Satan said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in the place of the most high. Woo. So if that's what Satan did when he was in heaven, what you think his children going to the children of disobedience going to do on earth? Jesus said, I believe in Matthew 13, 38, somewhere around there. He said that the tares are the children of the wicked one. Let's look at that text. I want to make sure. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13. And let's look at verse, I believe, 38. The field is the world. Hey, hey y'all, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. That lines right up with Ephesians 2 2. It says the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience, they are tares. You have two sets of tares. You have the tares that infiltrate the churches. Infiltrate the church. And when I say church, I'm saying God's true church. They infiltrate. That means they take over. And then you have the tares that are in the world. The tares in the world, the world is the storehouse for where the tares in the church come from. It, hey, y'all, that's logical. There has to be a storehouse for the tares. Where are they coming from? They coming from the world. Hey, y'all, three days and three nights means the grave. You can't show one text in the Bible that there's not one text. Just like my just like my challenge I give for proving to me that the Holy Spirit. Is has a throne. Nobody can show that the Holy Spirit is a has a throne. Nobody can show that the Holy Spirit has a throne and is a third person or third being of the Godhead. Nobody can show that. Nobody. Where is the throne of the Holy Spirit then? That's all I want to know. And the other thing I want to know, why is there not three people in the Garden of Eden if man was made in his image and likeness? Why aren't there three people in the Garden? And all the answers that only, you know what? Not too many people give me an answer for that. Whenever people run into hard questions, they just, they, they, they usually don't say anything. Every now and then you have one that'll say, that'll make an attempt at it. And it's rare. And, and the answer they give is so insufficient. There is no third person in the Garden of Eden. And there's no third person sitting on the throne of God and the Lamb. The Bible says in Revelation 22, it's only two people. So in the in the in in this parabolical language where it says three days and three nights, it means in the hands of wicked men. Now we're not going to go through that right now. In this now, I'm going to go further in detail on when do you start counting the three days and three nights? When is Jesus considered to be in the hands of the wicked? which tallies up to 72 hour period. This is prophet six family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodicean. God bless you. <laughs>